I'm going to do a quick um, video about ideal worm bin conditions here at the worm farm today um, with the dogs like always just hanging out with me. I uh, bought five pounds of worms from literally the only farm in the country that still had five pounds available as a purchase option. So we'll put those in and then I'll run through um, conditions that I found to be the best for any sort of worm bed or worm bin. This is from a farm in I think south of North Carolina and my note I've ordered from the ones before my notes were really bad shipping practices but great worms. Um, their shipping was a lot better this time. The worms seemed a lot healthier man that bird is angry at me. Must have a nest nearby. Um, the worms are still just as good as I said before you can see how active they are even after shipping usually their worms will be a lot more lethargic but these are active and moving. I've had some escape in the box kind of got pockets of them right here. We'll take those over to the pile really quick before we cut this open. All right, here's are all the ones that were in the box and outside the bag. Well, let's go put them. Actually, you know what? These stragglers get to go in the experimental pile. Lucky them. They'll go down in there. I'll get that wet in a second, give them somewhere to go. What do you want? You want pet? These dogs just love me. So I want to look down in here see how they look if they're as active as the ones that we're getting out focus down there yep very active happy worms about five pounds maybe more actually they might have sent me and they might have done a great job this time my old notes on this farm were bad shipping practices not nearly a pound of worms they were actually like last time they sent me like it felt like a pound of you know, material plus worms, but the worms themselves were maybe like a quarter pound. Um, and this time they, they must have changed their business practices because they are way better this time. All right, should have just taken this with me. Let's go dump this in real gently. I'm just gonna, I kind of just dug a divot right here, a few inches deep. I'll put them in there. Oof. That looks closer to 10 pounds of worms, at least in volume. I know it's not though, but this will be a great start. I can probably stop adding worms. I know you guys are getting tired of adding worm videos. I am too. You're not alone. Man, see these are really, really healthy worms. They're a little dry, but man, they're active. Maybe I'll order another round from this place if they've still got this, these in stock. Every other farm in the country, you try and order even a pound now, and they are out of stock. It really makes me wish that we have done good. I haven't been able to sell worms this year, but you know what? The fate's not always on, on our side. That's all right. Things happen for a reason, maybe. We'll find out later maybe why. Or maybe just it's because I'm an idiot and I screwed up too much. So, all right, so I went and grabbed some food out of our food piles out there. There they are out there. Grab some food. It's not very wet. You can see I have this switch to moisture. Since my other one broke, I'm going to use this three and one. One, it's also not as good. Um, my moisture level is a little low. It's actually not too bad. I was wrong. I didn't read it right at first. It's about an eight. Um, this is still a little hot though from being in the compost pile. So I'm gonna get a little more wet. When I first put stuff in, I don't mind it being up near um, a nine or a 10 if I know it's gonna go down to a seven or eight later. So I want it to sit, like when I come out here and check the farm every week, I want my meters to be at around eight. That's about what I found to where when you um, squeeze a handful of it, a couple drops come out so when it's about an eight. Okay, so put the new food on, put some water on it. It's sitting at about a 10 right now. I know in a day, with the water percolating down and evaporating out since I'm outside and it's a little breezy out here, that's gonna go back to an eight or a seven. You can get down to about a five before you have to get worried from what I found out. Um, then it gets a little dry and crumbly. Remember, these worms are pretty tough. When they're shipped to you, they're a lot of times shipped with a dry medium and then their moisture from their bodies kind of like makes it moist enough for them to survive it and they shrink up a lot. 
they can handle several days or even a few weeks in pretty bad conditions before they start dying in mass. Um, you want to watch the moisture level though for a lot of reasons. One is it's going to be the main factor for your pests that you're going to be dealing with. Um, high moisture content worm beds or worm bins are going to have a lot of mites and a lot of other things like uh, potworms and stuff that you may not want to get out of control. Um, low moisture isn't going to have as much, but then you're going to run your worms drying out. High moisture, you're also going to have to worry about acidity getting higher. Um, the thing with acidity though is you let it sit for a while or you mix in some eggshells or some lime or something else that will neutralize it. It's easy to fix. You just have to catch it and high moisture content is one of the ways to cause it because it can cause the, the things you're feeding your worms to break down differently and create really acidic or even sometimes um, environments that have a lot of alcohols in them. Um, so really watch your moisture levels well. If you don't have a meter, the rule of thumb is squeeze a ball of whatever you have in your worm bin and if a couple drops come out, you're good. If it drenches out, it's too wet. If nothing comes out, probably too dry. Um, just, it's just something you have to watch almost constantly. Out here where it's, it's dry and windy and stuff like that, I have, it's one of my biggest uh, maintenance issues is keeping the worm beds the right moisture. pH. So you can see right now my pH is just under a 7, which is fine. 7 is a neutral pH. It's the same pH as water. Um, you want it to be as neutral as possible. Your worms are pretty sensitive to pH factors. You don't want their bodies trying to be dissolved by acid, like really acidic or really basic environments. Um, it really has a does, a does a number on organic matter. Um, so just watch that. There's things to do if your pH goes up or down. If it's too low, that means it's acidic and you need to add eggshells um, or, or lime or something like that to bring it back up. If it's too high, start adding acidic things because that'll bring it back down. Um, you just gotta be careful pH can be one of the easiest things to balance in your worm bin, but it also takes the longest to fix um, when it goes when it goes wrong. It takes a little bit because it's a chemical reaction that has to fix it, so you have to let that reaction happen. Okay, now the third thing. Uh, temperature. My temperature right now in my worm bins, and you know it's going to be a little bit lower right now than it actually is because I just watered and my water comes out really cold here, is 70. So if you're doing red wigglers, they can survive anywhere from what I found close to freezing for a lot, for a little short time, but really they like being between 40 and 90 degrees. Um, anything above 90, the worms will survive for a while, but they'll start to suffer and start to die off pretty quick. Um, anything below freezing, they'll die off fairly quick within a day or two. If it stays below freezing in their bed for more than a day, you're gonna lose most of your worms. If it's around 40, they're all they're most likely all going to survive. They're just going to be very slow and dormant. If it gets below 40, you're going to start losing worms over time, but they can surprisingly survive for quite a while between the 40 and freezing temperatures. Um, but it's just one thing you have to watch. Right now, last summer, our worm beds never got above 80, which was great. Um, in the peak of summer, our worm beds were about 79 to 80-ish, and our worms were very active and moving around. Um, any hotter than 90, they get really sluggish and they almost start to kind of dissolve. It gets pretty gross. Um, I've had a bin in my garage get too hot once and it just turned into worm soup and it was really nasty. I'm going to head out. Um, just recap. pH, keep it neutral. Do what you can to keep it neutral. Add or, you know, add, do any additives you need to just keep it at 7. Um, you'll, need a mo you'll need a meter for that. That's something you can't really guess on your own. You can a little bit by how your worms are acting and how many like pot worms and other sort and like mites and other stuff you have, but it's just a guessing game. It's better with a meter. pH meters are pretty cheap. Um, moisture, check it by squeezing it. One or two drops come out, you're golden. Have a meter. I like to keep it around seven or eight, sometimes nine. I wet my food down to ten, let it and let it you know dry out to seven or eight. I'll let my beds get down dry, dry to six before I add water usually, but yeah. Rule of thumb, just squeeze it. Drop comes out, you're good. Temperature, keep it between 40 and 90. 40 and 90, they're happy as can be and they're productive. Um, anything under 40, they start to go dormant and die. Anything above 90, they start to dissolve and get nasty. So anyway, if you just keep those things in mind, you'll have good, happy worms. Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, I'm going to head out now. Anyway, like and subscribe if you want to see more.